Welcome to Sewing 101 with Blueprint DIY, an interactive and fun approach to learning the basics of sewing. I'm your host, Angelina, and I really like to use old clothes to make new clothes, but more about that later. Today, we're gonna learn all about the beginner sewing tools. I'm gonna show you a picture and I wanna see if you can guess what it is. Then we'll all learn together. Each right answer earns you 100 points. And don't be intimidated because I'm willing to bet that even some people who have been sewing for 20 years or more won't know the correct name for number 12. All right, let's begin. All right, number one, a slender piece of metal used to hold pattern pieces to fabric, anchor seam allowances as you sew, fit fabric on the body, and secure decorative trims. What am I? Hmm, what are these called? You have three, two, one. They're straight pins or sewing pins. And there's many different types of pins. You can get the ones like you see here with the little glass ball on the end. And a lot of people like them with a flat end so that they stay flat on the fabric. I do have a video on how to use pins if you're interested, I'll link it right here. They come in different thicknesses and different lengths for different purposes. You can have silk pins that are only for silk and they're sharper because when you put a pin in silk, you don't want to leave that imprint. And there's definitely a way that you use them in your seams to keep from sticking yourself. Trust me, I've done that plenty. All right, are you ready? Number two, a small stuffed object into which pins are stuck for convenient storage. Can you guess what it is? Three, two, one. It's a pin cushion. A lot of times you'll see them in this little tomato shape. And if you didn't know, actually the end of that little tomato is a pin sharpener. And so it has, I believe it has like some type of metal inside that you can use to sharpen your pins. The pin cushion is used for convenient storage of your pins so that they don't end up everywhere. I've created these in my sewing room so that they're conveniently right next to the sewing machine. So once I'm finished taking them out of garment, I just stick them in the pin cushion. And then you can also have a metal and it's a great thing to have and a magnet. It's not a cushion, but a magnet pin holder. And that one is helpful for when you drop your pins. You can just move the magnet around the floor, even if you can't find it and it'll find it for you. And they also hold them secure. But pin cushions have been around forever. They come in just like all different styles now, however you want them, but they're also really easy to make. All right, are you ready? Number three. A very fine slender piece of metal with a point at one end and a hole or eye for thread at the other. Used to join together objects with thread. All right, do you know what it is? Three, two, one. They're hand sewing needles. These are the type of needles that you put the thread through and that you would use to sew by hand. Alternatively, you have different needles that go in the sewing machine. But if you ever see a needle and it has the little hole in it, which we call an eye, that is for hand sewing. There's all different types. You can even get curved needles depending on what you're trying to sew. They come in different thicknesses, different sharpnesses, I guess I would say. There are the, those that are kind of blunt for stretchy materials. And then you have the really, really sharp ones that go through different types of materials. So yeah, we'll learn all about that later. And if you wanna know more about sewing machine needles, click here. All right, number four, a bucket shaped tool designed to protect your finger when pushing a needle through layers of fabric. It can be made of metal, plastic, or leather. Do you know what it is? Three, two, one. It's a thimble. And these are absolute godsends for people like me who stick themselves often. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I don't use it nearly as often as I should. These are used whenever you are hand sewing. So when you're using those hand sewing needles, then a thimble, traditionally they were made out of metal. You would put it on whatever finger you're using to push the needle through. And so if you are hand sewing and you find it hard to push that needle through, which it often is, then you will use the thimble to get it through and then you could just pull it out you can get it through as much as you need to all the way right to the fabric and then just pull it out on the other end without sticking yourself like i said they do come in plastic and leather right now as a matter of fact i found some at the dollar store at dollar tree the other day nice cute pink ones all right number five 
The yarn used to combine two or more fabric pieces together in garments, accessories, and other textile products. Do you know what it is? Three, two, one. It's thread. This is the essential part of sewing. This is how we combine two pieces of fabric together. You can use it in your sewing machine as well as when you're hand sewing. It comes in cones as well as on spools. These little plastic things, we call them spools. There's two types of spools, the traditional spool with the heads on top and then like the long slender spools. And they also come on cones for sergers or industrial style sewing machines. If you wanna learn more about thread, click here. All right, number six, a small tool to unpick a row of stitches. Do you know what this little tool is? Three, two, one. It's a seam ripper. This tool is a must. Like almost every time I go to the fabric store, just pick up one. You're gonna need it because you don't want it to get dull. You use this to unpick your threads. You can use the little picking tool to take apart your seams one at a time or you can just start the seam to come apart and turn it over and use the little ball in to go in between the seam and run it along the seams and take apart those stitches super fast. If you wanna know how to take apart stitches faster, click here. All right, number seven, a metal cutting tool that should never be used to cut paper, ever. What is this? Three, two, one. Fabric scissors. And it's very important that we put the fabric in front of the scissors because your fabric scissors should never be used to cut paper. It'll make them dull super fast. So you want to keep your fabric scissors only for cutting fabric. Now, I always say that you can use any new pair of scissors for fabric and it'll work just fine, but an actual pair of fabric scissors are a little bit different than regular scissors. Regular scissors are typically made with stainless steel, while fabric scissors are typically made with more of a carbon steel. It allows them to stay sharper and fabric scissors often have a steeper angle on the blade, which also allows them to stay sharper. So yes, you definitely don't want to cut paper and definitely don't hit it on another metal. One time I tried cutting and I was also using a metal ruler that'll take your scissors out super fast so keep your fabric scissors for fabric and your paper scissors for paper all right number eight use to nip the loose threads after you finish stitching do you know what it is three two one thread snips or nippers I really like these because they're another tool, another cutting tool that you can use just to snip just the little edges of thread. These come in so handy to just have right on the side of your sewing machine or when you're doing finishing work with your hand sewing needles. So you'll just take it, use just like the edge and you can get really close with these as opposed to a whole pair of scissors where you might have that little bit of edge left. So these will make your garments look nice and finished with no leftover threads. All right, number nine, a soft and flexible ribbon with linear measurement markings made mostly from reinforced polyester or fiberglass. Can you guess what this is? In three, two, one. This is called a tape measure, and it's mostly used to take body measurements, as well as for drafting patterns, laying out patterns on fabric, specifying the length of a garment, checking the size of hems, measuring curves and corners, and measuring curtains or quilts, and much more. It's a simple necessity for any seamstress. You'll see, like back in the day, all the ateliers had tape measures around their necks because you just don't want to be caught without it and it's just such a handy tool. All right, number 10, a plastic or wooden template having an edge composed of several different curves used for drawing curved lines. Do you know the actual name of these? Three, two, one. It's a French ruler. 
French rulers are used in drafting or were before computer-aided design to draw smooth curves of almost any desired curvature in mechanical drawings. When you must lengthen or shorten a pattern, you must blend in the lines. Using a French curve allows you to draw a perfectly smooth curve. I have a pair of French curves and I actually don't use them very much because I am an upcycler and I don't use patterns very much. However, I absolutely love my curved ruler. And this is an alternative to a French curve. It's basically a curved tape measure and it has the measurements along the edge and you can make any type of curve. So both the French curve and the curved ruler can be used to do the same thing. All right, I ran out of fingers. Number 11, a thin flat piece of hard chalk or soapstone used by tailors and seamstresses for making temporary marks on cloth. Do you know what this tool is that I never use? Three, two, one. It's Taylor's chalk. Taylor's chalk is used to transfer lines to your fabric if you are making the pattern bigger or if you are just marking where you want to put your buttons, where you want to put different stitches, where you want to put the dart. Um, I actually use a sliver of soap. This is something my mom taught me a very long time, so you never have to buy chalk. Uh, I just thought I would throw that in there. It's used for the exact same thing if you actually use bar soap. And there's also heat erasable markers that you can use if you prefer but no matter which one you choose Taylor's chalks sliver of soap or erasable markers whichever one you use you're going to need something to mark your fabric so that you can make your garments just how you want them to be all right finally number 12 a tightly stuffed pillow used as a curved mold when pressing curved areas of clothing such as darts sleeves cuffs collars or waistlines do you actually know the name of this thing Three, two, one. It's called a tailor's ham. Yes, because it's shaped like a ham. <laughs> I never knew the name of this thing until actually the last couple of years. And I just thought that that was so funny and I can't forget it now because it's shaped like a ham. And you just use it, especially when you want like the shoulder of a garment or anything that's curved. It's so hard to iron it on a flat surface like an ironing board. So you can lay this on top of your table or on top of your ironing board and it allows you to curve the garment over it. And say you're trying to open up your seam and lay it flat. This is going to allow you to press that nice and neat, get it crisp and looking amazing. So now you know something that a lot of longtime sewers don't know. All right, last up, let's make it easy for you. Number 13, a machine with a mechanically driven needle for sewing or stitching cloth. You know what this is. Three, two, one. It's a sewing machine and it is one of my favorite tools ever. You can get sewing machines all the way from mini sewing machines that weigh not even five pounds all the way up to industrial sewing machines that will sew through an arm and a leg. You can also get these in a mechanical version which are just very basic. They do what they're supposed to do which is sew two pieces of fabric together all the way up to the most elaborate, all the bells and whistles, electronic. You can get them, they're embroidered, they'll serge your edges. They, sewing machines are just absolutely amazing and I'm so excited to help you along in this journey and learning how to use one. You don't want to miss our next lesson because next time we're going to be learning the parts of a sewing machine so we can then start learning how to use them. Like I said below, I really like to upcycle and basically upcycling is taking old clothes and making new clothes. And I really enjoy it because it's really good for the environment and it allows me to be able to be super creative with fashion without having really, really big sewing skills. So once you learn how to make a straight stitch on your sewing machine, you'll almost be unstoppable. And hopefully I can help you along with that journey. I hope you learned something today. Definitely let me know in the comments what you learned and hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss our next lesson. I'm so excited for it. Definitely come back and see the parts of a sewing machine. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!